Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and in today's review I'm very excited to be bringing you a review on the Batman Caledonian Railway Class 812 produced exclusively for Rails of Sheffield In 2018, Rails of Sheffield announced the Caledonian Railway Class 812, which was to be produced for them exclusively by Batman. Now, I will be honest, when these were first announced, I didn't rush out and pre-order one, because I was sat on the fence, to be honest. When they revealed the engineering samples, I thought, well, these look good, maybe I'll wait till the decoration samples come out and then I'll make a decision then and when I saw the engineering samples they were tempting but then when the decoration samples got revealed that was what then sold it to me that's all it took for me to get one of these on pre-order and the one that I have pre-ordered is 828 in the Caledonian Railway line blue as preserved the reason I chose this one in Caledonian Railway liveries for two reasons. One, because I have seen this locomotive in real life and the other reason is because of all the models I have in my collection I don't own any in the Caledonian Railway livery so that's why I've got it, because it's different and I do really like the Caledonian Railway livery so that's why I've bought it. It's now arrived in the post, it should have arrived the day before and the only reason it didn't come on the previous days because we actually missed the courier because we were out but it's here now and I'm delighted that it's here so now we can get it open and have a look at it and get it down on the layout So here we have the Caledonian 812, straight out of the box and down on the layout. So the first thing to report, there's no quality control issues, so that's great. Because when you get these models there shouldn't be anything wrong with them. They should be perfect. And also this model is a beautiful performer, I mean straight out of the box it's beautifully smooth. You also do get a flickering firebox, but unfortunately it only works if you have the Next18 decoder installed, which this model takes. Also, just to quickly touch on the DCC decoder, during the production stage of this model, it had a DCC socket upgrade. Instead of a 21-pin socket, it had the Next18 socket fitted, so obviously that means you require a Next18 decoder. But the box still has the original label for 21 pin decoder so in the box you will find that you do get the new label which says that the model requires an X18 decoder so I just thought I'd put that in the video however if we take away the fact that this model doesn't have a flickering firebox that works on analog is it something that really detracts from the model not really because at the end of the day you're paying the money for not only a model that's very well made, but also it's very well detailed. I mean, the detail on this is second to none. It's quite superior detail, I think, in my opinion. We have sprung metal buffers. Not that I have any care for sprung buffers, but they're there. And I do love the lining that's been printed on the buffer shanks. Also, just look at the lining that you get on the buffer beam itself. As well as the loco's room number, Caledonian Railway 828 and the printing on that is absolutely stunning you've got separately fitted lamp irons on the model you've also got the lubrication pots separately fitted and painted as well underneath the smoke box door and on the smoke box door you have the smoke box door pin dart that's separately fitted and painted you've got the smoke box door hinges that have been painted as well 
And you've also got that star there behind the smart box door dart. And that's been picked out and painted as well. And it just looks stunning. On the boiler we have steam piping that's been separately fitted. You've also got a separately fitted metal handrail and that's in a chrome finish as well and that looks stunning. You've also got the steam piping fitted to the running plate and if anybody's wondering if why there are bits of lining missing on the lining here that's the attachment for the steam piping that goes over some of the lining. So I just thought I'd point that out in case someone starts to try nitpicking and picking faults with this model because I have had it in the past with a, in a few of my other videos. You've also got the footstep there. You also have the reversing lever has been painted. There's visible daylight under the boiler and you can see that we have the inside motion in the frames just there under the boiler. None of that works but it's there and it's painted and it's nice to look at. And it looks stunning. You also have glazing in the cab windows and the outside window rims have been painted as well in a brass colour. You've also got the whistle and the safety valves as well. They're not turned brass, they are just plastic and painted but I don't really mind that because that still looks really nice and it looks really good the way they've done it. On the cab sides we have separately fitted lamp irons and painted. You've also got separately fitted handrails on the cab sides as well and on the ends of the cab you've also got handrails and they've been painted. Now we have a look at the cab interior detail and you have to give top marks to Backman for this and when you look at it, to be honest, I've now decided that I don't really mind if the flickering firebox doesn't work on analog because the detail that's in the cab, particularly on the back head, it just looks stunning. All the detail is there, you've got the lever, regulator, the little hand wheels, the pipe work, gauges and dials, they're all painted and it just brings the cab to life and also the dials have printed detail on them which looks stunning so very impressive we've also got a metal foot plate and that is adjustable as you can see so that's a nice feature to have so now we move on to the tender. So we've got separately fitted handrails, you've also got footsteps, and you've got on the frames of the tender axle boxes and springs, and of course metal wheels on the tender. In the tender we have a metal coal load, and this can be removed. Like so. And what you can do is you can either scatter real coal on this or you can scatter, re scatter real coal in the tender. But what I will do, if I decide to put real coal in this, I'd be scattering it on top of the metal coal load. You've also got this piece of cellophane on the back of the coal for some reason. But once that's in the tender, you can't really see it. On the rear of the tender, we have separately fitted lamp irons. We've also got steps for the crew to climb up to get up to the top of the tender. Either to get to the water filler cap or if they need to get up into the tender to get to the coal. For whatever reason. Again, beautifully crisp lining on the buffer beam. You've got NEM tension lock couplings and of course, just like on the Loco, sprung metal buffers. So now we move on to the livery application for the model and I have to say the Caledonian Railway livery is a gorgeous livery. 
the blue in particular, I think it's a beautiful shade of blue and it's the correct shade of the real locomotive as well. Very evenly applied, no imperfections in the paintwork. You've also got the brown as well that's been applied on the running plate, on the footsteps and on the tender frames and what I love about this livery in particular is the white lining which I think not only stands out but it really lifts the livery you've got the lining on the sandboxes and wheel arches on the boiler bands running plate wheels cab sides and on the tender and on the tender frames it just looks stunning and the lining has been crisply and neatly applied you also have the Caledonian Railway font in this case the CR and in the middle the coat of arms and the coat of arms and of course the font that they've used is correct and it's being crisply and very beautifully applied on the running board we have rivet detail and you can also see that rivet detail on the tops of the wheel arches and sandboxes it's always great to see the rivets and also on the running board we have small metal handrails so moving on to the other side of the loco on this side we don't have any steam piping as per the prototype we do however have the Westinghouse pump on this side of the loco and the detail on that is just stunning with the pipework that's been separately fitted picked out and painted as well as the vans that go around the pump as well, they've been painted as well and it just looks stunning and you've also got the washout plugs on the boiler which have been painted as well in a rather nice silver colour so now I'm going to show you the details that I've added to the model so on the rear of the tender I've added as you can see a hunk coupling I've also added the vacuum pipes the rear ones and a screw link coupling. I've also fitted the cab doors on both sides. They slotted into place rather well. And that was held in place using a little bit of yu hoo And then on the front of the loco I've added again a screw link coupling. Both vacuum pipes, the front ones, and I've also added the lamps. Now the lamps are not glued in place. They are fitted in place using very small bits of black tack and they've just slotted onto the lamp irons and the reason I've used black tack is because obviously with this locomotive it can pull either freight or passenger train so I'm going to swap the lamps over accordingly for whichever train that this loco is pulling with some locos I have glued lamps on permanently my express locomotives mainly because they're not going to really be doing anything else other than that but with locos such as this I think it's quite nice to have the changeable lamps and the detail on those is really nice. You also get some lamps to fit on to the lamp irons on the cab sides but I've not bothered fitting those on so I've put those to one side but I might fit them on at a later date. So for the verdict then on this model I think it's a stunner. I can overgloss the fact that the flickering firebox doesn't work on analog and it'll only work if you have a decoder if it's being used on DCC that I can have a gloss because to be honest it doesn't detract from the model and it's still a stunning model the detail is superb the livery application is stunning and it's an overall beautiful model and it has been well made and I think that Batman are onto a winner with this one so it was definitely worth the wait and it's definitely worth getting so if you like your Scottish locomotives and you're a fan of steam locomotives in general then I would highly recommend this model to anyone if you collect your steam locomotives that is I think it makes a fantastic addition to any layout and there are still some in stock so I would get one of these while you can it, they're definitely worth getting I know some people might think 199 quid is a lot of money for a model like this but it's definitely worth the money you won't regret buying one I certainly don't and it's just an absolute beauty it's one of those models really where I just can't really stop admiring it it's one of those models that I could admire all day to be quite honest with you it's that beautiful 
So, hats off to Backman. So to end the video, I'm going to get this locomotive pulling my rake of Hornby LMS Stanier Period 3 coaches. I think that will look stunning. It will also be nice if in the future we could have some more Caledonian railway locomotives to join this. Like perhaps a retool of the Caledonian single wheeler. Or even the Caledonian 419 tank. Maybe even produce some Caledonian railway rolling stock. I'd like to see some coaches being released. But thanks for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like what you see then subscribe to the channel. Also smash that like button and also why not check out all my other videos that I have on the channel. But until next time, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'll see you again soon. Bye.